All right, we're still naming alkanes, but uh, if all alkanes were just a stick, then this would be a pretty short unit. They are not. Many of them have branches on them, where you've got the main line of carbons and then it splits off. Just like you have a tree trunk and then branches coming off of it. Now, the order that they've given these in kind of goes from hard to easy, so forgive me if I start at D and work my way back. This is a easy one we'll do as a warm-up, and then we'll get increasing complication here. So, before we dig into that, let's talk quickly about branches and how we name them. We've seen that if you have one carbon for an alkane, we call it methane. And if you have two, we call that ethane. And if we had three, we'd call that propane. And if we had four, we'd call that butane. No big deal yet. That's what you call them if they are the primary chain, the longest string of carbons in a molecule. But the other thing that can happen is you can have an alkane line connected to something else so that it's a branch. And if it's a branch, we tweak the name. If you had a methane attached to something else, instead of a methane, we call it a methyl group. If you have an ethane attached to something else, we call it an ethyl group. If you have a propane connected to something else, we call it a propyl group. This is a butyl group. And you can have pentyl and hexyl and octyl and decyl and any of those other ones. This is the name when they're attached to a larger thing. And sometimes you'll hear that something has been methylated or ethylated or propylated. That means one of these groups has been stuck onto it. So we'll keep that in mind. We're not going to need that for D, but we will for all the others. It'll be an essential part of our name. In D, this is a straightforward alkane. We have one, two, three, four, five carbons. So this is pentane, nothing to it. OK, now it gets interesting. When you have a branched alkane, the first thing you must do is identify what we call the primary chain, or sometimes they just call it the backbone. It is the longest chain that goes through the entire, that goes from one end to the other. So I'm going to count two different ways here. If we go like this through the molecule from one end to the other, we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If we count that way, we find that this chain is seven carbons long, so maybe it's a heptane. But I did that in red, so maybe you might be suspecting already that that's not correct. If we start counting from this end, we could say this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> it's eight carbons if we count along this blue path. That's the one we want. The primary chain, if we do this right, is eight carbons long, so this thing is some kind of octane. Now there's more to the name because it's got a branch, but primarily it is an octane. Now the branch is a single carbon, which means this branch is, is a methyl group. So. Without the formalism of naming this, we could say this is an octane with a methyl group stuck onto it. And good news, most of the name for this is simply you say methyl octane. The last little detail we need is, well, where is the methyl group? Which carbon is it attached to? And the way you do that is, on your primary chain, each of these carbons gets a number, which is like its address. and so. If we start at this end, we could say this is carbon number one, carbon number two, carbon number three, and we call this 3-methyl octane, which means if you were drawing this, you'd start on the right side and kind of build it up that way. You'd say, okay, it's an octane, and then on the third carbon, there is a methyl group stuck on. So fair enough. Now, you might be asking, why did I start at this end? Well, if we start at this end, then we would call this 3-methyl octane. If we started at the other end, let's do this, then this would be carbon number 1, 2, 3, 4, 
five, six, and from that we would get the name six methyl octane. The rule is you want to keep these numbers as low as possible. So if you have a choice between calling something 3-methyloctane or 6-methyloctane, you would choose the one with the 3 in it. And in general, the first number in your name you want to keep as low as you possibly can. That's how you decide which end of your molecule is the 1, and then you count in that direction. Fair enough. Let's try a couple more. In B, primary chain, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, it's octane again. It's some kind of octane. Now if you were thinking about counting this way to check the length, that's good. I'm glad you're thinking of that. If you count that way, either you go 1, 2, 3, 4, way too short, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, still shorter. So it is appropriate to call this line here our primary chain. And what's attached to it? A methyl group. So this is a methyl octane. What number is that octane on? 1, 2, 3 if we count this way, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 if we count this way. It's 3-methyl octane again. They gave us the exact same molecule, it's just they this time they drew it in a simplified squared off structure, and this time they drew it showing all the kinks. Okay, last one here. Where's our primary chain? This one's a little funny because you could count your primary like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's a reasonable primary. Or you could start up here and you get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So either way it's a heptane. Either one of those is valid. Um, I'm going to go with the purple one just because it's a straight line and I find that a little bit easier to work with, but you could go either way and you should get a valid name no matter which way you do it. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 makes it heptane. Our primary chain is heptane. Now, what else does this have on it? There's a methyl group there, and another methyl group there. If we only had one of these, we would call it methylheptane. When there are two methyl groups, you call it dimethylheptane. And we have to say where these two methyl groups are attached. One of them is on carbon number two, the other is on carbon number three, and the way you write that is two comma three dimethylheptane. All right, they keep getting worse. Um, I think we can do these in order. You've seen all the tricks now, it's just a matter of applying them. So, here is our alkane. Where is its primary? Where is the longest chain that goes through this? Um, if we go... I'm going to color code these because I have a feeling we're going to try a few. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, that's one way through it. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's shorter. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, seven is the best we can do, I believe. This is our primary chain. So if our primary contains seven carbons, we call it heptane. Now, what's attached to this? Two things. Down here we have a single carbon, so this is a methyl group. Also attached to this, we have a two carbon branch right there, which we call an ethyl group. So our name is going to be something like ethyl methyl heptane or methyl ethyl heptane.
which one do we pick? Alphabetical order is the answer. When you have many branches, you put them in alphabetical order. So butyl starts with B, that would be the first one, if only we had that. Uh, ethyl is next, and in this case that tells us ethyl in alphabetical order comes before methyl, so our name gets expanded to ethyl, methyl, heptane, and we're still not done. What's missing? We need numbers for each of these to show where they are attached. So this ethyl group, which carbon is it on? If we start at this end, one, two, three, four, or if we start at this end, one, two, three, four. Okay, well, that simplifies things, I guess. That no matter which way we count, this must be 4-ethyl. So I guess the tiebreaker is, where does this methyl group go? We, technically, we still have a choice of which end we count from because we'll get 4-ethyl either way. But this methyl group is either 1, 2, 3, or if we count the other way, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So choosing this way gives us a lower number on the methyl group, and that means we should call this 4-ethyl-3-methylheptane. Right? If you were drawing this, you would actually start on the right and say, draw a heptane. Now, on its third carbon, put a methyl group. Then, on its fourth carbon, attach an ethyl group. Fair enough. Okay, what's this next thing? They've drawn it in kind of a loop shape, which is a little inconvenient, but uh, I think our primary has to be in a big arc like this. That's going to be our longest. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Decane. That loop makes it a decane. Now, what's attached to it? Here we have a methyl group. Here we have another methyl group. So, if there's only one methyl group, we'd write, we call it methyldecane. Since there are two, we call it dimethyldecane. And where are they? Uh, if I start on this end, one, two, three, four, and six, Starting on that end would make it 4,6-dimethyldecane. If we start on the other end, we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7. Both of those numbers are higher than the corresponding numbers from this end, so starting from the other end would give us 5,7-dimethyldecane. 5 and 7 are too big, so scratch that one. It's 4,6-dimethyldecane. Okay, and how about this last one? What do we do first? Look for your primary. Uh, one, two, three, four, five is looking good. If you want, you could go this. You know what? Let's do it weird. Let's go this way. Let's call this our primary chain. So if you do that, the primary is how long? One, two, three, four, five. 5 makes this a pentane. What's attached to it? Well, we have a methyl group here and another methyl group here. So dimethylpentane. And where are those methyl groups? If we start at this end, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we would get 2,4-dimethylpentane. If we start at the other end, 1, 2, 3, 4, we still get 2,4-dimethylpentane. This thing is symmetric, and so it doesn't matter which end you measure it from, or which end you count from. So we know we're good to say 2,4-dimethylpentane. That's the only numbering it could possibly have.